Well, there's all kinds of little nuances in society like that, right? Oh, that woman, she's too young, too old to be with that young guy. He's, he's only 18, you know, but hey, she likes, he's cute, you know, hey, he likes her, she's cute, whatever. Who cares, right? It's none of our business. But yet, the consternation faced in society is almost worse than breaking a law. You see, so the laws of man mean very little. We don't have a golden rule imposed. The landlord say, well, when your law has teeth, then, you know, we'll do it. But they forget about the fact that they're owned. There is a day of reckoning. Better safe than sorry, like I say. Be ready to meet your maker and to find out that, hey, if he's just like you, you might be in trouble. If he says, well, you know, I got no regard for you. If you don't have any regard for your tenants' well-being, why should God have any regard? Where are you going? You're going to be homeless. You're going to find out what it's like to be stressed out and burdened and, and live in fear of paying your rent and be thrown out on the street to live in the freaking bushes. That's probably what God's going to do to you, right? Say to you. I'm just saying, better safe than sorry, right? It's a good philosophy to prescribe to. So we got to get serious, man. I mean, look, I'm everybody's friend. You know where I learned that from? Jesus. I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, God, he's here. He, Jesus came not for the righteous, even if the righteous consisted of 99% of the population. He came for that 1%, that stinker, those stinkers, that 1%, the unrighteous, the sinners, the evil men. So, this is serious business for believers to carry the cross and, and to love their enemy genuinely. You can't feign it. You can't fake out God. God knows your heart. He knows my heart. He knows when we're lying, and we all do it. We're born masters of self-deceit. So, yeah, it's hard to love your enemy, but that's the rules. That's the law God laid down. That's the golden rule. That's what God wants us to do. If we don't do it, we disobey. We'll never find happiness. We'll never even be able to teach people how to find happiness. But happiness is comprised of a lot of different factors. And we need them all, man. Okay, we got to be free. And if we're not free from the money masters of misery, the slaver class, they've never been able to resist it. Ever since the inception of money, the invention of money, this class of people has never been able to resist it. A lot of them are ancient monies they've handed down. With this Rosicrucian belief where, hey, you teach your kids that maybe the people believe it themselves. They're delusional. They're self-deceived. They say, tell their children, these uber-rich families, you know, the aristocrat class, you know, the Marie Antoinette class, right? They tell their offspring because hey, they believe it themselves. And the kids, it's easy to believe what their parents teach them. Yeah, you're going to be reincarnated. It was, you know, because you're more blessed by God, you know, their God. Like, yeah, a lot of them open are Satanists. They're openly, we believe in Lucifer. Sorry, but, but you know, we control the purse strings because we've subdued our own conscience. So we're more powerful for good reason because our God is better, more powerful, that is, than your God. And we're willing to relinquish our conscience to maintain power perennially on earth. So suck it up, fella, you're goody two-shoes, you're a dumbass. That's why we have power, we teach our kids. You were born, you are reincarnated into this very wealthy family. And this is your lot, that you're more blessed, that the God of this world has blessed you more. You're smarter because you're, you're first to subjugate your own conscience, to relinquish your own conscience. So surely smart, this soul business that you can't pay your bills with soul. It's invisible, dumbass, pipe dreaming crap. They're talking about these religious nuts that tell you you shall believe in God and have the fear of the Lord in your soul and care about answering up on the day of judgment. These are dumb, dumb, dumb idiots, fools. You want to be like me. You, following the steps of your parents. So that's why they continue to rule. This is why we need God's help, because violence isn't the solution. The God of the Bible hates violence, it's very clear. So I don't, that's good reason enough to be a pacifist, say, 
if God hates violence, I'm going to learn to hate violence, and I do. I get that. I get that. I understand why God hates violence. What do you think your parents want their, their children to act violently toward each other? That's appalling. And it happens. Especially, I mean, family is blighted with the drugs or epidemic out there. All it takes is one close family member to have a problem with drugs and alcohol. And you're all, everybody's screwed up in the family. They're, through osmosis, I mean, your close family, you care so much. I mean, you want them rich and famous and wonderful people, you know, and uh, well healed and everything. That's, you want the best for your family is what I'm trying to say. And it's tough to watch the destructive behavior. And, you know, it's, you can't talk to them because they they believe they got it going on. They believe that eventually everybody will understand you need to anesthetize yourself. You need to do drugs. You need to be more effed up than the world to escape it because you can't. The reality is too horrific. See, I've just touched on one thing, this in runaway inflation, how much it's distressed me lately. And I got to hear these idiots on the man. So all you landlords, property management companies, and B&B owners, you got to start jacking up your prices, motel rooms and everything else because um, cause we tell you the rents are going up. So this is the time to do it. If you're going to raise your rent, we're giving you the cue. You got it? That's what the mainstream, that's, that's what I see out there. You see, it's evil. Because all you need is one investor. One turd in the punch bowl screws it up. One investor, an investor, that's market manipulation. That's collusion right there. When you got all these various investors working together, even silently, never met each other, doesn't matter. You understand how this works. But certainly they want a return on their investment. So they want the price. They're trying to drive the price up. It benefits them. They don't care if it hurts you. You understand how repugnant, repulsive this whole thing is? How anti-capitalistic it is, truly? Anti-American, anti-freedom, anti-security, anti-good. It's just anti-good. So it's pro-bad, pro-bad. These very divisive stuff, this permanent underclass they're creating, where it's hopeless, you'll never enter middle class. You better do some fancy footwork, pull a rabbit out of the hat. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a lot of jobs for all the people coming out of college anymore. I, I don't know. It's kind of sewn up. The economy slowed down here. So you were jumping on the bandwagon for this job or that job, and sorry, it's gone now. So even your education might not save you in terms of making enough money to have a middle class life. We're already seeing that. People, business owners, entrepreneurs, law enforcement, a lot of people already can't afford to buy all the best they can do is afford to rent and hopefully save enough money to pay cash or something or be able to squeak in and have some fat ass mortgage they got to pay. But it's distressing. It's very troubling. Anybody that has kids knows what I mean. It's like, I want to leave this world a little better for my brief visit. And I, I'm going to leave it crappier. What have I done? I give, I'm going to stand before God and answer for, did I do my part in trying to educate the public on how pernicious, how horrendous the effect of currency debasement is on the public at large? It, it screws up. You can't escape it just because it doesn't affect me. I'm on the receiving end. It's benefiting me, the inflation. And you think that's okay. You think you can be happy apart from God, God's will in your heart and mind and the will of the masses, your fellow human beings, your brothers and sisters. You think so? The meek, the mild, the passive. What you label to justify what you do as the uneducated, unskilled. We're in trouble, friends. Only God can help us, drag us out of this demonic rabbit hole toward hell they've pulled us. They're evil men. At the uppermost echelons of power are extremely evil men residing. You don't even see them. They don't want to be seen. You know, I talk about George Soros. I don't know much. I know some people I trust that have talked about this guy. They, you know, I mean, how can you call yourself a Jew if you're godless? I mean, there's no Jew, a true Jew. I mean, that's, a whole, that's about believing in God, the Bible. So how can you be 
an avowed atheist and also be Jewish, you see, it's like an oxymoronic. It's, it, it's hypocritical on its face. It's like, and it's illogical. It, sick logic doesn't make any sense. The same would go for a Christian that call themselves an atheist or a Buddhist. I mean, a Buddhist, I don't know Buddhism. I don't know that well, but I mean, you hear different things. For the most part, it's spiritual at least. It has to do with ethereal realms, cosmic things, meditation and all that. So I think for the righteous, it's, you know, it's fine, Buddhism, you know, to respect, you know, this idea of becoming calm and peaceful and blocking out the world in that sense and just be rising above it. But, you know, the Muslims, too, the same thing. You call yourself a Muslim and you're an atheist. It's just irreconcilable difference, like oil and water. It makes absolutely no sense. You'd only say that as, you know, a calling card or something. Oh, yes, I'm a believer when really... You don't, but you want their business, so to speak. Or you don't want to be a pariah in society. You understand? Which could happen all the time. But, you know, one billionaire can wreak a lot of havoc in your neighborhood. I mean, I've already pointed out, one aggressive investor that doesn't have any money but has good credit can go out there and team up with the bankster class and start snapping up, I want. It all like you see these people advertising on TV. We got the national professional home buyers always this clown up there. I just want to slap that guy silly. You little piss. What do you know? You little twerp. You know, take some history courses. They're out there. Oh yeah, the, we buy houses. Professional. We we'll buy your house. It doesn't. You don't have to spend another penny fixing your house. We buy it. We'll buy it all. Yeah, we're going to come into your town and buy up all the low-end houses, anything at the low end, and then I creep up and start taking it all, anything available. I, one man, I've created a housing shortage. A housing shortage in your town can be created by one, count them, one aggressive investor. And, oh, yes, we should... <laughs> applaud the investors. Oh, the accolades. Well, they're investing their money and stuff. And it's good for business. And it, it's good for business. It's good for everybody, right? Not exactly. Not at all. Meanwhile, we're shipping in young, strong immigrants. None of them are homeless. Our own native-born sons and daughters sleeping out in the cold, suffering needlessly, sometimes dying out there. And then society, American society is paying 100000 a year purportedly here in California, close to thereabouts, to keep one inmate, one criminal, child molesters and rapists and murderers and thieves, right? To keep one of them in jail for one year. One inmate, one year, $100,000. Three hots and a cot served up to them. Hot showers. Free medical, free rent, free utilities, help reintegrating into society. But if you're homeless, pff, no soup for you. Oh, we got to depend on the charities to take care of this. It shouldn't be up to the government. Meanwhile, we're spending $50 billion a year to subsidize housing costs for poor people that can't afford to pay their rent. Not only can they not buy, but they can't pay their rent. So if they live in Manhattan... They got the rent's a couple grand, twenty five hundred bucks for for a flat for one bedroom studio apartment, uh, and you work at McDonald's or federal minimum wage or whatever, close thereabouts. And then the housing authority people, uh, HUD, and they tell you, well, listen, your cost share of this, because you're earning, you know, a couple grand a year a month, so you got to pay two hundred dollars. So in other words, the government steps in and pays the other $2,300 perpetually forever if you keep that minimum wage job. So the government will pay that. And all that does is it enriches the fat cats and it exacerbates the problem. And I'm supposed to just shut up and people should think I'm radical for talking the way I do. We're in trouble. And I'm absolutely convinced that only God can help us and he will, thank God. Because if you read scripture and you read what Christ predicted, 
it's good for the righteous. It's going to go good. But the righteous don't rejoice at the suffering of others. They hate it just like God hates it. This violence in Ukraine, it's horrible. 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 Violence anywhere, it's horrible. Horrible, horrible. How many times do I have to 